Hi guys, this is Mrs. Gassler, and in this video, we're going to be making the types of forces foldable. The first thing you're going to need is a sheet of paper, blank, uh, notebook paper, it doesn't really matter, um, colored, whatever, uh, as long as it's a piece of paper. We're going to do some folding first. Uh, I'm going to fold it in half, hamburger style. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to go ahead and crease it. We're not going to do um, a whole lot of folding, uh, but I do need this as a reference because I'm going to fold this in kind of like I'm making a... Uh, science project um, display. Okay, I'm going to fold this one here. These are going to stay here like this. Uh, I'm going to fold this one in as well. Uh, like so. Um, so I've got this going on. So this was my whole sheet of paper and I folded the two sides into the middle like that. The next thing I need to do is make some marks on it. I'm going to do a little bit of cutting. I'm gonna make some marks because I'm not gonna cut all the way to the edges. Uh, I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna go like this across. I'm gonna write some stuff at the edges here because I have two categories uh, of types of forces, and we're gonna put one on each half. And so I'm gonna label what kind they are. Now, on one side, I'm going to cut it into thirds, like so. And one of them I'm going to cut it again into halves, so it's going to look like that. So there's four pieces, but they're not all the same size. Um, and on the other side, I'm going to cut it into seven pieces, which is not even. But I want to put three lines here and three lines here, and that will give you about even. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so that's what you want to cut. Now, I have one that I have already cut and written on. Uh, okay, so this is what it's going to look like. We're gonna go a little bit slower than that though. Um, and so we're gonna start with the one I said, we've got the one, two, three, and the four, uh, where we've got the two. So we're gonna start up here. And use this to get you to focus. There we go. All right, so on this side, we're gonna be talking about field forces, okay? Now we've talked a little bit about this before. These are forces that act at a distance. That means there's no touching required. Um, these are also called fundamental forces because it turns out all the other forces are really just these um, on a different level, okay? Um, the field forces are gravity, electromagnetic forces, weak nuclear forces, and strong nuclear forces. That's why these are kind of together um, as their own. Now these flaps, um, I have them cut now, so we're going to open them up and we're going to put some information on the inside, beginning with gravity. Gravity is a force between any two masses. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go underline any two masses. That means you and me, uh, my dog who just walked in. Um, she's also a mass and I am pulled toward her as well. On Earth, Earth is the biggest mass around so we usually only notice it uh, and they always pull you down, okay? The symbol we use for this force is F with a subscript G for gravity. Electromagnetic forces. Um, are really uh, two separate forces, but it turns out they always go together, and you'll see why here in just a second. Electromagnetic forces are electric forces, F electric, and magnetic forces, F magnetic, okay? And the reason they go together is because they are, uh, electric forces are the forces between two charges, which is um, electrons. Electrons are po uh, negatively charged, and they um, push on each other, okay? Um, but they are, they pull on positive charges, okay? Um, magnetic charges are the forces between two poles, and those poles on a magnet are because of spinning electrons. So you can see they're both dependent on electrons. You really can't have one without the other, okay? So that's why they go together, okay? Uh, the last of these con uh, field forces uh, are also kind of together. The weak nuclear forces uh, will never show up on a force diagram, which you'll learn about later. Uh, force weak, okay? They're forces that hold the pieces of protons and the pieces of neutrons together. So what makes a proton a proton um, is held together because of uh, weak nuclear forces. And strong nuclear forces are what holds those protons together uh, with the neutrons in a nucleus. Those don't show up on force diagrams either. So we've got those there. So that's a force strong, okay? So that sums up all of our um, field forces. Um, electric forces and magnetic forces can show up on force diagrams and gravity is almost always there. Actually it is always there. Okay. On the other side we have contact forces. The pages are getting stuck. 
contact forces, okay? Um, for contact forces, the object must be touching, okay? Um, and so we've got a bunch of these. We're gonna start up here at the top. Uh, these are organized in an order that it's good to check uh, when you're drawing force diagrams, when you're analyzing forces um, and situations. These are This is a good order to go about thinking about what forces are there and whether or not you need to label them. Um, friction is a good one to start with. Friction is represented with capital F and a little f. There we go, we can see it now. Uh, a force that opposes motion, that's what friction does. <laughs> it's really wanting to slow you down and bring you to a stop. Um, if you are stopped, it wants you to stay stopped. If you aren't stopped, it wants you to stop, okay? Uh, if it can slow you down, it will. If it can't slow you down, it will really try, okay? It's always pointing in the opposite direction of your motion. If you aren't moving, whatever's trying to get you to move, it's going up against that, okay? So it's always opposite of that. Um, the next one is another kind of friction, air and water resistance. It's really just friction if air and water is what's trying to stop you, okay? Uh, we use F air because it's a specific friction and F water, okay? The next one is called tension. Tension is what we call it if a force is supplied by a rope, a chain, a string, or a cable. So if you are um, thinking about something that is hanging by a string, the thing that is holding you up, holding it up, uh, is called tension, okay? Tension is what we call that. Um, if the thing that is holding it up, the rope, the chain, the string, the cable, if it is at all stretchy, maybe it's a spring, we call that tension an elastic force, okay? Maybe it's a spring, maybe it's just stretchy, maybe it has some give to it, we call that an elastic force. So elastic force and tension are actually related forces, okay? It's only elastic if it's stretchy. The next one is normal force. Normal forces are not called normal because they're, they're always there. Um, I mean, sometimes they kind of seem like they're always there. Um, they're called normal forces because the word normal in, um, in math, upper level math, you might not have come across this yet in your math classes, but normal means perpendicular. And a normal force is always perpendicular. That's why it's called a normal force. Um, it's a support force from a surface. Okay, so if you're seated right now or standing, um, the, the floor or the chair is holding you up and it's pushing up against the floor, uh, against you like this. So it's pushing up, perpendicular. Um, if you were on a hill, it would still be pushing perpendicular to the hill. Um, if you were on a really steep hill, it would still be pu pushing perpendicular. If you were leaning on a wall, it would still be pushing perpendicular, okay? Uh, because that's the nature of a normal force is to be perpendicular, okay? A buoyant force is also a support force. That's why it's right here, but it's a support force from a fluid. Um, it always pushes up. I should make a note of that there. Always up, okay? Buoyant forces always push up. Buoyant forces make things float. Um, air and water can do this. So balloons float in air. They also float in water. People float in water too. So if it's a buoyant force, if it's floating, um, it's a buoyant force. Now, applied force is down here at the end because it's the last thing you should write down. It's the last thing that you should consider. If it's not one of these other forces, any one of these other forces, if it's not something else on this chart, then it's just any old applied force, okay? Um, you could write applied or you could write F something else, okay? Maybe it's a dog pulling on something, so you could write F dog. Maybe it's your friend pushing on you, so you could write F friend. You could put anything there, okay? Um, if it is something specific, then you could write down one of these things, and if it is something else, you could write F applied or F something specific, okay? And those are all of our types of forces. Now, it's important that you don't lose this. This is a useful tool to consider and use to identify forces and to make sure you've included everything on your force diagrams. Um, make sure you glue this or staple this onto an appropriate page in your packet so that it doesn't get lost. All right, thanks for watching.